Hey everybody, Erica here. Uh, hanging out with Rockshaw and Chakra today. As you can see, we got some fresh snow and it's a very brisk day today. So these guys are feeling pretty darn playful. Uh, the cool thing about wolves is that they're actually built for those super cold temperatures. So Chakra here being a timber wolf, can withstand temperatures down to about negative 40 degrees. And then Raksha, our Arctic wolf here, can withstand temperatures down to negative 70 degrees. The cool thing about the Arctic wolves is that they have a lot of adaptations uh, that help them withstand the cold temperatures due to the areas that they live in. So generally they're gonna have the shorter snouts, shorter ears, shorter legs, all of them, all of this helps them with retaining heat. Uh, they also have special fur. Here guys, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, their guard hairs are going to be hollow, which acts as a nice insulating coat for them. They also produce a lot of extra oils in their fur, which keeps them nice and water resistant. And they're gonna have basically snowshoes for paws. So it makes them really efficient at running through snow. So for today's episode, I wanted to uh, focus on the current wolf pack in Colorado. Now, Colorado has been absent of a wolf pack since their extermination in the early 19. 40s, there have been four single documented wolves in Colorado. Unfortunately, they didn't last here for very long. One was shot, one was poisoned, one was hit by a car, and one disappeared. Well, in early January, uh, stories emerged of a wolf pack sighting in northern Colorado. Uh, then on January 22nd, Colorado Parks and Wildlife did confirm this wolf pack sighting. They observed six wolves, which is great news. We've been waiting a very long time for wolves to naturally make their way down into Colorado. And it actually is going to help with the reintroduction that we're hoping to see happen within the next three to five years here. With this happening, there have been a lot of questions about Initiative 107. The main question being, why should we have a reintroduction program when wolves are now making their way into Colorado on their own? Well, there's three main reasons for this. Number one, six wolves is not enough to establish a viable population for the entire state of Colorado. Number two, these wolves are uh, protected by the Endangered Species Act and they're owned by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And number three is that this pack is not a sure thing. So let me break this down a little bit more to help you understand. Uh, why are six wolves not enough to make a viable population? Well, in order to have good genetic diversity for any living thing, you need to have unrelated members in order to have healthy babies. Wolf packs are families, meaning most of the time they're all going to be related to each other. So it is likely that this pack of six wolves are related to each other, and therefore only two of them are actually going to be breeding. So if that wolf did leave the pack, it's not going to be able to do any breeding because there aren't any other wolves in Colorado at this time. So it is important that we reintroduce multiple different packs because that's going to give the genetic diversity that's going to help the population grow and be more sustainable throughout the entire state. Now, why does it matter that these wolves are protected by the Endangered Species Act and owned by U.S. Fish and Wildlife? Well, it means that Colorado Parks and Wildlife uh, has no say with these wolves, that there is no recovery plan for them in place, as well as no management plan for them. The other thing is that there's no compensation plan if these wolves are to cause any livestock depredations. So at this point in time, Colorado Parks and Wildlife reports on these wolves to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, and then U.S. Fish and Wildlife makes any decisions on if anything 
is going to happen with uh, management of these wolves. Now, Initiative 107 would actually give Colorado Parks and Wildlife more control over these any of the wolves in Colorado. Uh, it would require them to not only form a recovery plan, but a management plan. The initiative also requires Colorado Parks and Wildlife to have a compensation plan for the small amount of ranchers that might be affected by livestock depredation. So it would actually be quite beneficial to pass Initiative 107 because it's going to require those plans to be put into place uh, and it's going to be better for the wolves as well as Colorado residents. <laughs> now, uh, lastly, why is this pack not a sure thing? Well, these wolves were found on the very northwest border uh, in Colorado, uh, very close to the borders of Utah and Wyoming. There is nothing telling these wolves that they have to stay in Colorado, so they could very easily cross over the borders into other states and not come back. The scary thing is that both Wyoming and Utah do not have protections in place for gray wolves. Uh, majority of the areas in those states actually allow wolves to be killed anywhere for any reason. So if any of those six wolves did wander into those states, the chances of them coming back to Colorado are very small, and then Colorado would be back to having no wolves. So it is important that we still pass Initiative 107 because it is going to be the best way to ensure that we have a healthy, viable population of wolves in Colorado in the near future. Chakra. Uh, hopefully that answers some of you guys' questions and I also did want to address a question that I had a couple of vlogs ago uh, with this initiative 107, it, would it be allowed for wolves to be hunted? This is something that is going to be decided by Colorado Parks and Wildlife with the input of Colorado residents. So at this point in time, I do not have a yes or no answer for that. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, please keep asking me your questions and I will do my best to answer them in future vlogs. And again, don't forget to vote yes on Initiative 107 in November.